Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sullivan Ayuso. I'm from uh, Carolina's Medical Center, uh, third year surgical resident. Thank you all for allowing us to present our work uh, at SAGE's annual meeting. Uh, the title of the talk that we'll be giving, as mentioned, was Laparoscopic Versus Robotic Inguinal Hernia Repair, a Single Center Case Match Study. Uh, the only disclosure that I have is I'm a member of the United States Army. Uh, obviously, none of the reviews th that I uh, expressed this morning are reflective of that of the Department of Defense. Uh, inguinal hernia repair is the most common hernia operation performed in this country with 700,000 repairs being performed annually. Conventionally, open repair has been the standard for uh, inguinal hernia repair. However, within the last 30 years, laparoscopy has become increasingly common. Uh, and even more recently, robotic platform has been used for inguinal hernia repair with proponents pointing towards things like enhanced visualization and improved ergonomics as reasons to perform the procedure robotically. So there are few uh, studies comparing uh, laparoscopic and robotic inguinal hernia repair. Most notably, in 2020, the only um, um, randomized multicenter trial um, was published by Prabhu and colleagues um, out of the Cleveland Clinic. And that study, they showed that the robotic platform was associated with increased cost, um, while no difference in um, short-term pain or health care quality of life. Now, operative time was also longer in that study. However, more recently uh, in surgical endoscopy, uh, there was a prospective uh, propensity match study um, that showed that uh, overall complication rate for those uh, patients getting robotic repair was actually decreased compared to a laparoscopy. So the data thus far is unclear. Things that have been measured uh, in the past and, and frequently are post-operative complications, such as wound complications, operative time, uh, durability of repair, and quality of life. So the aim of our study was to evaluate our own outcomes um, between those patients going, uh, undergoing laparoscopic and robotic repair. Our hypothesis is that there uh, would be equivalence or near equivalence uh, in the outcomes that we were measuring. So this was a single surgeon study. Um, we uh, had an expert hernia surgeon who regularly performs uh, robotic inguinal hernia repair as well as laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair. Uh, we queried uh, for patients uh, prospectively in our uh, single institution database, and then a match study was performed based on the laterality of repair uh, and the surgeon performing the procedure. Uh, primary outcomes were operative time and wound complications, and the secondary outcomes were uh, recurrence, readmissions, and reoperation. So here you see that there were nearly 300 uh, patients included in this study, 141 in the laparoscopic arm and that in the robotic arm. Demographically similar, uh, except for the robotic inguinal hernia patients were four years older on average. Um, nearly a quarter of the patients were smokers in both arms, uh, and one in 10 uh, endorsed steroid use. In terms of the hernia characteristics, uh, patients predominantly had unilateral uh, hernias uh, and uh, had CDC class one wounds. Um, there were a fair amount of recurrent hernias in both groups. So shown here is operative time for uh, all patients included in the study. Uh, and when comparing laparoscopic and robotic repair, um, robotic repair was nine minutes longer, but this was not clinically uh, significant. When we broke it up, importantly, uh, in terms of unilateral repair and bilateral repair, robotic hernia repair was uh, longer um, by approximately 20 minutes. And in bilateral hernia repair, this is also the same. However, what we wanted to assess is if there is any improvement over the course of the, the study. And what we found is that in the first two years that robotic hernia repair was performed, um, compared to the last two years of the study, there was a 50-minute decrease in operative time. And you see here um, that the total operative time was about 100 minutes, which is um, parallel with the laparoscopic group. Other post-operative outcomes that we evaluated include things like post-operative urinary tension, which is a very common uh, complication uh, in inguinal hernia repair. Uh, there was no difference here, about 5 to 8 percent for both. In total charges, uh, we noted a $10,000 increase in the robotic arm. However, it must be said that Recently, uh, we evaluated all of our robotic inguinal hernia repair patients um, and compared uh, a, um, essentially a balloon-based laparoscopic repair with a tacker to uh, that for our traditional robotic approach. And in the bilateral arm, there was actually a slight decrease in, in charges um, 
in comparison to laparoscopy. Hernia recurrence was low overall, um, at, at both below 2% uh, is consistent with uh, prior data from our institution. Um, and the only patients that were readmitted uh, were in the robotic group. One was for wound complications, another for uh, allergy uh, to the prep, and then the lastly uh, for uh, bowel obstruction. So in conclusion, um, both platforms had a relatively low morbidity and were associated with a um, high rate of a durable repair. Uh, robotic uh, inguinal hernia repair um, overall had an increased uh, time uh, in the operating room. However, uh, it substantially decreased over the course of the study. Uh, I think that uh, our main conclusion here is that you can perform both satisfactorily and uh, largely dependent on surgeon and patient preference. So the limitations of our study is a single surgeon study. Um, at our institution, we only have one study, uh, one surgeon rather, who routinely performs robotic inguinal hernia repair. Um, quality of life data was not included in this study. Um, however, looking forward, we think that long-term quality of life data is important as there's mesh shrinkage over the course of time. Um, and you know, we would like to evaluate things like pain uh, more than 30 days uh, as was previously reported in the randomized control trial. And then we wanna assess for surgeon durability and comfort over the course of time and have a very thorough uh, cost analysis in terms of robotic versus laparoscopic repair. Uh, thank you all for allowing me to present. I'll take any questions at this time.